So the story of Ruth, um, it's a very well-loved story. Um, I, take, I take the narrative of Ruth as very largely in confrontation with a sense of law. There is a sense of the law of the place that she is trying to enter. She's trying to enter this place, Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Bethlehem in Yehuda. She's following her mother-in-law. And it seems that she wants to enter into this society, and this society is not at all keen on having her. What is preventing her from entering the society is uh, very largely a law. There is a law in the book of Deuteronomy that says that no Moabite may enter the community of God. So there you have a biblical text, which is it's almost like a placard up, up over the city gate saying, Moabites, no entry. And against this, Ruth insists on accompanying her mother-in-law and it's clear from her great speech that she loves her mother-in-law, Nomi, but she also is in love, in some sense, with what she senses through Nomi. Again, I'm thinking about this unconscious resonance of things. She makes a great speech to Nomi, who's trying to deter her from accompanying her. And she says to her, wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you spend the night, I will spend the night. And your God will be my God, and your people will be my people. And where you die, I will die. What is she saying in that great speech? She's actually saying, I don't expect any benefits from this. I don't expect to find a husband, another husband. I don't expect to find the normal satisfactions that a woman of my age might be looking for. What I want is you and what I sense through you, your God, your people. And that means, in a sense, she's being quixotic. She's giving up any real prospect of a future in order to follow a sense of something unknowable something that she can't quite put her finger on that belongs to her, that she feels she's returning with Naomi to a place where she never was. So she's returning to a place where her soul feels that it will find what it needs. And that sense of things acts against the force of the law. The law comes out against her and really bars her. When she comes into town, no one pays any attention to her. It's as if she, she doesn't exist at all. And when the, her relationship with Boaz begins to, to develop, the way she makes it happen is, I think, simply by the courage and the imagination of what uh, is called the, the, the quality of chesed. And chesed is not just loving kindness, as it's usually translated, but it's also courage and imagination and willingness to go beyond the boundaries of what's rational and sensible. And that's what Ruth stands for, it seems to me. She takes her chances. The, 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 the text actually uses that word. When she comes into Boaz's field, chance so willed it, vayikar mikreha, that she came into Boaz's field. That is, she didn't really know who she, where she was going. She, did, she didn't have her sights on where it would be economically most, most profitable for her to try to glean in the field. Chance so willed it. And this is a woman, it seems to me, Ruth is a woman who is willing to go where it perhaps is not quite safe, and she's guided by some kind of inner conviction. That's the only way to account for it. We don't know what she looks like. She has no, there's no reference to her beauty, which is very unusual. Uh, biblical heroines are always beautiful. Um, but she is not described as beautiful. But we do hear the beauty of the way she speaks. That there's a certain beauty in the language that she speaks that simply overcomes people's boundaries. That people who would like to push her away, to put her in her place, are actually, in a way, vanquished by her. And that somewhere they yield, they surrender to some force that she has. Um, and in the end, the law yields to Ruth. That is, the law is changed uh, that, uh, on the very day that Ruth comes into town, that's the, the way the Midrash puts it, to allow for a female Moabite Male Moabites are barred, but female Moabites are now allowed. And it seems clear that the reason the law has changed is because of the force of the personality of Ruth and because of her will willingness to act in chesed, to act in this mode that requires a great deal of courage and a great deal of imagination and of a willingness to risk herself and to go where people don't really want her to humiliate herself in a sense, but she does it in such a beautiful way that it's not a humiliation. And in the end, of course, she becomes the great-grandmother of King David, who saturates God with songs and praises. That's the meaning of her name, Ruth, Ruth, Rivehu. Ruth means to, to drench or, or to saturate. 
meaning in some way that her great-grandson David, who is so famous for his psalms, who is he in the very core of his being? He is Ruth. It's Ruth who has unfolded into, into the songs of David. And if you, if you are moved by the songs of David, then you have to understand that he, he was totally informed. It's not just genetically, but in his spiritual genes. He was totally informed by the life and the spiritual daring and ecstasy of his great-grandmother, Ruth. <laughs>